music from the film He's Just Not That Into You, which opens tomorrow, a film directed by Ken Quapas with music by Cliff Eitelman. Guys, I have to tell you, I was in no mood for this movie. I was in no mood for anything because I thought from the trailers, and this is why trailers can be so deceptive, I thought it was going to be kind of a whining yuppie movie. And, and I've always thought that, you know, yuppies should be smothered at birth. And I got there, and it became clear that it's not anything what I expected. I certainly did not expect the most delightful movie I've seen so far this year. Wow. And that's what it certainly is. I mean, and it's just a charmer uh, from beginning to end. But it's not, you know, mushy charming. It's edgy. It's intelligence. It's superbly scored, as you just heard, and brilliantly directed. Ken Quaffis and Cliff Eidelman have stopped in this evening uh, on the eve of the uh, premiere tomorrow, the opening tomorrow of He's Just Not That India. Guys, welcome to KUSC. Very happy to be here. Yeah, it's great. Now, you had a huge premiere earlier in the week. It's a little overwhelming at the Chinese theater. It was quite the star-studded affair because not only were the nine stars there, but their celebrity pals were there as well. So it was a little heavy. Yeah, and his casts go. I mean, this is pretty impressive cast. Maybe just go through them. Sure, there's um, there's nine leading players, and they are, in no particular order, Jennifer Aniston, Ben Affleck, Jennifer Goodwin, Jennifer Connelly, Justin Long, Kevin Connelly, Bradley Cooper, uh, Scarlett Johansson. Who am I missing? Did I get to nine? Um, Someone's going to kill me if I left them out. See. <laughs> it's 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 almost like trying to name the magnificent seven. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> you, no, actually, once you get past Horst Buchholz and Brad Dexter, it's that's pretty what I'm forgetting. Easy. Brad Dexter. That was <laughs> right. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I have to say that uh, throughout the movie, and and I am, I'm I'm scrupulous about not reading any notes. You know that the. the studio supplies because you know I, do, I i like surprises and i don't want any and i'm watching it and about halfway into this i'm thinking you know this reminds me a lot of that kind of bite and edge and wit of sex in the city and then of course after the movie's over i discover that i should be reminded <laughs> well the the film was inspired by one line of dialogue in one episode of the show sex in the city and then two of the staff writers from the show went on to create the book, He's Just Not That Into You, which is uh, an advice book, which actually was very bold in, in the way it, it sort of dispensed rather blunt advice about uh, trying not to misread signals from the opposite sex. Yeah, yeah. And, of course, the girl at the center of this, I think probably still best known now for her work on uh, Big Love. Mm -hmm. who's, Goodwin. Yeah, who's wonderful in this keeps misreading every possible signal that can be misread. She is a, a, a real train wreck of a character. She takes the thinnest piece of evidence of someone's interest and just blows it ridiculously out of proportion. And what what's really satisfying is listening to people laugh with her, but with such embarrassment for her. And I, I watch, sometimes I'll turn around in the theater and see people actually covering their eyes because they can't quite bear to watch her like make such a fool of herself. Yeah, because we've all done that. I mean, that, that's the problem. I'm still doing it. <laughs> uh, Cliff, it's, a, it's a, a kind of tricky movie to score. I think romantic comedies, which you know, doesn't really say what this film is. It, it's certainly both of those. It's very funny. It's very romantic, but it's a lot more than that. I would imagine a kind of a tricky film to get the tone right. I think so. Well, because there's nine main characters and several unique relationships within those characters... It was a feat in trying to sort of navigate through all of these various relationships, keep them distinctive, keep their situations distinctive on a musical level, and at the same time tie them all together and create some kind of musical thread that ties the movie and makes it all one piece. And so in doing that, it, I felt the need to sort of play it intimately and try to play it real for what was really going on. Mm -hmm. and sort of create a thematic material for, you know, as I was saying, for, for each particular 
relationship. So yeah. it was definitely a lot of waters to walk around. And sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's no main story. There's really a theme played out in nine variations. Mm -hmm. Really, I mean, that's kind of what the script is. Yeah. Well, let's hear some more music from He's Just Not That Indio, the new film by Ken Crawford's music by Cliff Eidelman. <laughs> Music from that enchanting new film that opens tomorrow. He's just not that into you. Music by Cliff Eidelman. The new film from director Ken Quapis. Both of those guys have stopped in this evening on the eve of the opening of He's Just Not That Into You. And this is 91.5 Classical KUSC, Los Angeles. So I think there are, there are two kind of directors when it comes to film composers. There's Robert Altman who, to two major film composers, to my certain knowledge, to both Tommy Newman and Pat Doyle, he said, listen, this movie is so good, it doesn't matter what you do. Just go write whatever you feel like writing. And then there's the other kind of director <laughs> that, <laughs> that kind of you know, <laughs> wants to tell you, and that's his job, to tell you exactly what he wants. Now, where does he fit on that continuum? And as a further question, is having a very musically literate director, as Ken certainly is, does that help or hinder your work? Helps my work a lot. I think that since this was our fourth film working together, we have, I think, created a bit of a shorthand in working together. I kind of can pick up on the signals from Ken pretty quickly as to the direction that the music needs to go. I could sort of feel it as I'm playing a piece of music Ken has an incredible ability to sort of, in the nicest way, help guide me. And sometimes it's just right off the bat. But if a piece of music needs some sort of guidance and slightly tilted into a different direction, he has a way of being able to speak in musical terms about it. When we, rather than, if, you know, being able to say to me, you know that part where it gets to the E major chord? Yeah. Right there. Maybe right there you could tilt it a little more in this kind of emotion or in that kind of emotion. And that's a lot easier for me to respond to rather than not being able to be sort of precise about what spot in the music that we're referring to. I mean, even when I'm recording it, we could talk about the interpretation and Ken is behind the console reading the score and we're talking about bar numbers versus uh, at this particular piece of dialogue, something's going on that we need to address. It would be more like at bar 32, beat 3, 
that little note there may be landing on the dialogue there. We need to address, you know, that little be natural up there. There you so go. So it, it actually is a, it makes it easier for me. There you go. As to that famous generalized director comment to a composer, oh, can you help make this scene more orange? <laughs> oh, I say that to Cliff occasionally. <laughs> Well, no, the tricky thing is, is even though we, you know, Cliff and I love a lot of the same music, I, I actually never try to refer to other compositions or other composers when we're working. It's, it's, it's the, by, by the same token, I wouldn't say to an actor, you know what I'd love for you to do is do it more like, say, the way Brando did this in that film. It, 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 you know, the, the key is always trying to be expressive without referring to things that have already been made. It's like, you know, to kind of find it from the inside out. Oh, excellent. Excellent, excellent. Because, you know, if you keep referring to other things that have been made, your picture turns out looking like other pictures yeah. that have been made. I think, that, I, I think that one of the things I love about this score, too, is, I mean, the, the film obviously has familiar elements. It has elements from romantic comedy. It, has, it, it certainly is funny, but what's unique about the film is it doesn't behave the way a normal romantic comedy does. And, and, and so one of the reasons I love what Cliff does is he doesn't behave like a normal composer when he's working. There's always some other kind of wrinkle to add or some other, just a little curlicue that w doesn't feel like it should be there, but then it's perfect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it doesn't behave like, well, it doesn't behave like any film I've seen in the last few years. And it, it constantly is defying expectations, which is also a very good symptom. When you see a movie that you feel that you have written, <laughs> by the time, you know, you walk out of there. It's like what they used to say about Victor Herbert's music. Uh, he writes the kind of music that people whistle on their way into the theater. <laughs> <laughs> but but nothing predictable about this one. I, I heard, uh, I can't remember who said, I think it was the director, Walter Hill, who once said, you have to d do a dance that the audience knows, but if you don't show them a few new steps along the way, they're going to get bored really fast. Precisely precisely. Well, let's hear more music from He's Just Not That Indio, the new film by Ken Quapis, music by Cliff Eidelman. <laughs> Thank you. 
from the film that opens tomorrow he's just not that into you music by cliff eidelman composer cliff eidelman and director ken kvapis have stopped in this evening on the eve of the opening of their new film he's just not that into you and this is 91.5 classical kusc los angeles the member supported broadcast service of the university of southern california i think that uh, of all the many things that film music can do one of the best things it does is something's happening on screen and characters are thinking something and they're saying something and the music sort of tells you what's really happening mm. uh, in a way that you know, is very subliminal, but it's absolute magic when it works. Well, that's certainly the case with Jennifer Goodwin's character, who, again, just obsesses over every little detail, you know, and and, and breaks things down to such an re- absurd degree. And, and I think what, you know, what you created, Cliff, is a, a kind of almost, not, not simply percolating, but, but, but sort of a sense of a record that's like in a, a mind, like a record needle that's stuck, and it just keeps skipping and skipping and skipping. And also sort of a... Uh, to kind of uh, go on the the percolating idea, which that word, by the way, became sort of a one of the words we used as we were working along the score. We called it the percolating cue, and that cue we call it. He's into me. It's the name of the cue, and the idea of it not just percolating at you, but that it's continually sort of taking shifts to the left and shifts to the right, as if the music is trying to read signs itself. And uh, some of the orchestration reflects that in these sort of unpredictable places that you'll hear sort of a vibe note that sort of pops up on an odd beat. And then you'll hear another vibe note pop again at some other point, which is not exactly on downbeats, but could be in the, in the oddest places inside the cue. And these things are sort of my way of sort of painting a sign. Uh, something that flashes before you. Is it the right sign? Should I should I take that road? And then just as it goes off, the music sort of shifts unpredictably to the left and, you know, modulates into some sort of key or shifts in a time signature in such a way that it... I guess the idea was to try to keep the audience a little bit off balance a little bit mm-hmm. and not allow the music, for at least for the Gigi character, to settle and become completely comfortable but to always sort of be on the edge of your seat with her her brain firing off to the left and firing to the right so that was the the idea of of that theme no a very unusual way to characterize the 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 romantic lead of a story exactly and of course the irony is well i i suppose i'm saying more about me than anything else but you know she's the most totally adorable person in the movie she does something, I, I don't even know how she, Jennifer Goodwin did this, but she manages to be incredibly pathetic and make you f- love her anyways. It, yeah, it, it's, it's just remarkable. And her acting actually sort of, what, some of the first themes that came out of me sort of popped out, that sort of suspended theme, boom da dee da be da that sort of jumping out at you just because of the way that she expressed the lines and the way she would move so quickly around the scene and... She has a speech that's nearly half a page long, and one of the you know something you're never supposed to say to an actor. You're never supposed to say "be funnier" or "go faster." I mean, you can say "pick up the tempo now and then," but just yeah. don't you know. But with Ginny, I just I thought you know what she did a couple of takes, and I came up to her and I said, "Could you do that a little faster?" And she said, "Can I?" <laughs> and then and then it's like a machine gun. I've never heard such a thing. But not only was it fast, it was precise. Yeah. Everything was specific and had and, and had it was rich with meaning, but it was moving like lightning. 
<laughs> I think yeah. that had an impact for sure on, on oh and on, how how we how created the story. Yeah. Wonderful. yeah, yeah, and and it's the rare movie, you know, especially one like this that you put a foot wrong at any key moment, and boy, you're in trouble. It's the rare movie in which not at any point in the movie does anyone or anything put a foot wrong. It's so delicate. It's such an incredible balancing act. You know, it's like it, it's actually a lot more in my in, in, in sort of from a, a composer's view. It's so delicate the line that you walk musically, because there are also very deep aspects to the film with the Janine character, played by Jennifer Connelly, that expresses a whole different side of the film that sort of mm-hmm. gives it this very mature, older relationship and sort of crying out for a more emotional theme and walking between those lines between the various relationships was it's that was probably it it could be more difficult than say you know a big action cue where you're just sort of letting the orchestra fly off on a big battle where here everything is so exposed and there's a lot of dialogue and you have to kind of every note is exposed so it's it Mm -hmm. it, i find it to be more challenging Yeah. Also, the, the 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 screenplay calls for really abrupt tonal shifts, not between scenes, but within a scene. Something that will be heading down a comic road and on a dime turn and become quite dramatic. And and, and so there there yes, there are many many places we could have lost our footing along the way, but uh, but it works. It came together. Yeah. Well, it's, in my view, the best movie of this young year so far. And, I mean, that's the least of what it is. I mean, I just love the movie. And I will give you the standard hype and hyperbole-proof guarantee. Go see the movie. He's just not that into you that opens tomorrow, directed by Ken Quapis with a score by Cliff Eitelman. If you don't absolutely love the movie, I mean, love the movie, not like it a lot, not admire it, you're going to like it and admire it, too. If you don't absolutely love it, you send me your ticket stubs, I'll reimburse you. (laughs) Now, you could argue that... (laughs) But but you can't. Not my sincerity, <laughs> I don't think. Yes. <laughs> Seriously, guys. Terrific movie. Terrific Thank movie. you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having us. And I'm actually going to pay money to see it again. <laughs> <laughs> guys, good luck and come back with the next one. Hey, Absolutely. Could, could we give a plug to the soundtrack album that, that will be out? The score album will actually be out digitally on... Um, February February 16th, yep. and the physical CD will be available for the score March 10th. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. So. Well, go get that, too. <laughs> uh, guys, come back. Absolutely. Thank you Thank for having you. us. Here's more of the score that Cliff Eidelman wrote for that new Ken Quapis film that opens tomorrow. He's just not that into you. Thank you.